Hello everyone, welcome back to another YouTube video with OCD Recovery. I saw that a little backwards, welcome back to a little, huh, that was interesting. Uh, anyway, so I wanna talk about health OCD. I just got off the health OCD webinar, so if you attended, I hope you enjoyed, we had a lot of fun. Um, it, you know, health OCD is a very interesting fear because there's a lot of ways that it can kind of intertwine, right? Where I always say sensory motor is pretty straightforward. I mean, it's fear, fear, conditional life acceptance. If I notice my sensation for the rest of my life, my life is ruined. Where health OCD has a little bit more entanglement because it could be fear of death, fear of being physically with a sensation based of uh, uh, pain for the rest of my life. What happens if I get sick and get my family members sick and then they die and I have guilt and shame. So health OCD is can mingle in lots of different ways to where, like I said, where a hyper awareness type of fear is really just the fear of being stuck for the rest of your life. So before I go any further, don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, uh, share it. Health OCD is definitely something that afflicts a lot of people. Do you know what a lot of people don't even realize they might have health OCD? In my, in my regular life and what I do for work, I see a lot of people, especially in the pain realm, where, whoo, they're pushing. They are pushing what you would definitely be considered like, okay, they have some strong irrational beliefs surrounding pain, chronic illnesses, fear of what if I notice the pain for the rest of my life? What happens if my life is ruined? What happens if I can't handle it? And so forth and so forth. So there's a couple things I want to talk about, and I'm kind of going to repackage what I talked about in the webinar and give you a preview of like what we do talk about in the webinars. Now the webinars are really specific. I go into extreme detail. I use the books right here. So it's really, really important to talk about. Um, you know, in the, and this is the first book on the reading list, how to stubbornly refuse to make yourself miserable about anything. Yes, anything. This page right here is the REBT principle sheet where we break down belief systems and, you know, we apply this to ourselves when we work with other people and we really realize that these principles that Ellis laid out are so foundational for bringing down the fear cycle. So, you know, a lot of people say stuff like, without compulsions, there's no OCD cycle. That's not true at all. It is a major driver, but the belief system is what drives the cycle. Now, yes, they're interconnected, but if exposures were all we needed to do and bring down compulsions, especially outward compulsions, we would just do exposures all day long and prevent the response when we recover. And we see thousands of people who have done huge exposure type getaways and stuff, made great progress, but actually haven't addressed some of the core fears, which is the fear of dying, losing out on life, the fear of deservingness and fairness, the fear of getting someone else sick, so forth and so forth and so forth. So what are some of the main belief systems that are based around health OCD? Let's talk about ourselves. So the fear of dying, obviously, the fear of experiencing a physical pain for the rest of our lives, being tortured, kind of like an internal torture, never being able to recover um, from whatever disease you want to have. Then on the, on the flip side of that, what happens if, because harm, contamination, and health OCD and hyper-awareness really twinge together. So what happens if I get sick, I get my family members sick, contamination OCD, health for myself, they pass away and then I feel guilt and shame because you have what's called conditional self-acceptance. I couldn't live with myself. I'm the worst person ever. I'm a terrible person. My life is horrible. Down the rabbit hole over and over and over again. So the sensations that we feel with health OCD will make it feel as real as it can. It will make it feel like we need to figure it out right now. We have to go to the doctor. I need an answer today, right now. That's how it all is, always is with OCD. It will make it feel like you have to make those changes right now. Driving down the road, this is the what I use in the webinar. I use a lot of analogies and metaphors because they're really good for bringing people in and, and, and making us realize that Oh, you know, like that's really how it works. Remember, the practical application of, of OCD and how it works, not really about the neurophysiology and neuroanatomy and how it's cool. I mention that in every video because a lot of people are going down those rabbit holes, especially with, with any type of fear. So you're driving down the road, you have a sensation, and you might literally schedule a doctor's appointment at the next red light, right? Don't text and drive. You, you schedule the next one when you park. So you go in and you look for tests, test after test after test. HIV is the same way. People will go in test after test after test, looking for that relief, never getting the relief they want, realizing that statistically speaking, and you can look at some, some statistics with health OCD, that it's not nearly as prevalent and, and debilitating as it was 30 or 40 years ago. 
Now, if you do get HIV, because we do have to go towards our worst case scenario to a degree, you could still live a reasonably happy life. This is critical to, in, in, to look at. This helps break down that belief over time. But if you're absolutely scared of getting HIV and then giving it to your partner, maybe there's some ROCD. Another example I used, let's say you have the fear of, what if I have HIV? Then the fear of giving it to someone and then that person getting HIV and then maybe passing away. So you stop having intimacy with that person. That is a compulsive behavior. So we want to break the fears down and look at things in a very, very reasonable fashion and realize that even if we were to experience a certain sensation for the rest of our lives, it's not the end of the world. We don't need those immediate answers right now. That is critical. And allowing ourselves to feel all that uncertainty, all those sensations, all those urges, allow it to build up inside of us and not need to go and look for that relief from the doctor or Dr. Google or confess to your partner. The more you look for certainty, the further you go down the hole of OCD. No matter if it's health, POCD, harm OCD, sensory motor, existential solipsism, doesn't matter. That is critical. So this is what I break down. Daisy's at the door. Let's get up a little bit, right? I'm always sitting down. So let's actually get up. Open the door, go see the dogs a little bit. Everyone's always asking about my dogs. They're always being crazy. Once Erica goes, you want the door open? Come on, let's get the door open. She loves having the door open. So yeah, health OCD. I'll give you the health OCD. My dogs are going to give me a heart attack. Yeah, I see. So super important. Say hi to the camera. Here's Milo. Okay. Yeah, my window's nice and clean. Health OCD. Yeah, my window, I'm going to touch my window, get contaminated. So, oh, that's a little bit too much right there. Oh, uh, let's go over to the couch. Oh, let's sit right here on this chair. Here we go. So super important to break all that down. The belief systems that we have are the driving factor of OCD. The compulsions that we do are driven by how real the urges and the sensations feel, which are catalysts of our belief system that makes us engage in compulsive behaviors. Belief systems that are intrusive, whether it's an intrusive thought, sensation, or image, drives us to create fear responses, makes us do compulsions because the urges and the sensations feel so real. Once you understand this practical application of OCD, you can go a long way in the recovery process. But if you are not addressing the breakdown of the core fears, exposures can become compulsive. Just was talking about that with someone in the webinar. Constantly looking for relief. Cancer documentary after cancer documentary. Uh, like myself, constantly reading things on sensory motor. Did this person recover? Did that person recover? Over and over and over again. Never actually gives you the relief that you want because you're kind of just going down that cycle over and over and over and over again until you basically are just in the rabbit hole of Dr. Google and the regular doctors and, and all that. Now, I do want to talk about that. When you go to the doctor, their goal is to make sure you don't die, especially if it's an emergency room. So it is important to realize that they're going to give you reassurance. They're more than likely not trained in OCD. Totally fine. They're not going to understand why you're there. A lot of people, I've talked to people who are very clear, have some sort of health OCD. And when I talk to people in real life, and not one doctor has ever mentioned that to them. At the hospital, primary care, it's not their fault. It's not what they do. And they're not specialists in that. Uh, they don't work with it day in and day out like we do. So it is super important to realize that. So remember, breaking down the core of fear, absolutely critical. Doing exposures when necessary, watching documentaries. If you have a fear of death, I just was talking to someone, walk through a graveyard. It's a really good exposure. Look at the dates. See a lot of the young people in there. Life is not fair. There's no deserving this. It's important to break that down. Deservingness and fairness are one of the number one concepts that gets people into emotional turmoil, especially when health OCD is involved. Super critical. Breaking down the fear that even if you did experience a stage four cancer, it is important that you can learn something from that, from a hardship, going out and helping people and stuff like that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a little hyped up from the uh, health OCD webinar. I thought it would be a great time to uh, walk on here, walk on here, jump on here. That doesn't make sense either. Get on here. Turn it on. You know what I mean? We say words, we don't even know what they're meaning sometimes. Uh, I hope you enjoyed seeing my dogs. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. If you have any health questions, ask in the comments. Uh, I'm always going through, you know, and, uh, and talking to people and engaging. So always a pleasure. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that like button. Really good to get this out there. Um, you know, we like to take a fun approach, but yet a serious approach. We use compassion and empathy, but we're also pretty straight um, forward because, you know, OCD, especially health OCD, fears of dying and fear of contaminating someone else from an HIV, for an example, getting them sick um, or an STD and then them dying doesn't really budge what some of the some of the uh, techniques that are used on the mainstream uh, recovery, um, you know, just 
just guidelines. So I hope you guys enjoy. And as always, have a great day.